What's up, guys? Um, I have a little Sunday school lesson for you. Sorry, it is so dark. I just am filming this late. So, um, and I don't have one of those light up rings. But anyway, you don't really need to see me for this. So, um, we are going to do the second of the four Gospels for the um, death and resurrection story of Jesus. Last week we did Mark, so if you didn't watch that, you should go and watch that real quick. It's super short. This week we are doing the Gospel of Matthew. So let me just tell you a couple quick things about Matthew. It is the second Gospel story uh, to be written about um, Jesus, and it's written by Matthew, um, as you, if you may not have known, and um, it is written about 80 or 90 um, AD, so after Mark, um, which was written maybe 20 or 30 years before that, and then um, we think that Matthew had access to Mark's story that he written down, um, or that at least he was telling, um, so he got to use some of what Mark had already written, and then he got to add some of his own um, twist to it. So Matthew is known as like to be the most Jewish of the Gospels. And so you may not know what that means, but um, it was written to Jewish Christians, which we learned a little bit last week that these are people that are culturally Jewish. So they do all the um, practices of Jewish people um, and because they had been, you know, probably grown up Jewish or their either the recent ancestors had, but they believe that Jesus is the uh, Messiah or the Son of God. But now we have a more like larger distinction between Christians and Jews. Um, but at that point, there really wasn't that big of a distinction. So um, just kind of, you know, a little bit of what um, is going on in this text. So I need you to get your Bibles out. So if you don't have your Bible, I need you to hit pause and go run and get your Bible. Cool. So now that I, I have you have your Bible, I need you to go to the Gospel of Matthew. Um, before we read, I need to kind of explain a little bit of something to you because um, the the Gospel of Matthew has this particular thing in it um, when um, you're talking about Jesus's death um, or his crucifixion, another way to say it, um, that is not in any of the other gospel stories. So kind of kind of crazy the way how, how that is. Um, that's why you need to look at all the different stories to kind of compare and contrast, see what's similar and what's different. So in Matthew's gospel, it talks about, um, I don't know what your Bible will say, but mine says sanctuary. We'll look at it in a little more detail in a minute. Um, but it's talking about the temple. So we, at least I know in my teaching, we haven't done a lot of teaching on the temple. Maybe you guys did in um, Kids Way or in Breakout. But um, I, wa I want to make sure we all kind of understand what we're talking about. So um, in a lot of the Old Testament, you'll hear about uh, people going into the temple, especially like the high priests. Uh, so that basically meant that in the temple is where you got to pray to God, right? So, you know, like how we go to church and that's kind of, we have our time to uh, worship God a little more formally um, or, you know, but you also have known that you have other experiences with God. Um, we've talked about this before at youth, whether in the mountains or at Asbury Hills or um, another camp that you like to go to or a revolution. Well, back in the Old Testament, when you were Jewish, you only got to pray to God in the temple. There was a part in the temple where only the most religious leaders could go. And it was called the um, the the place that where Jesus where Jesus sorry where God's um, spirit dwelled was called um, the holy of holies. So if you say that's where the holies of a holy of holies was, um, that's where they believed the specific little room in the temple is where they believed that God's spirit dwelled. Maybe sounds a little crazy now um, because we don't kind of articulate or 
understand our faith to be that way, right? Like we think that God is everywhere at all times, right? Like God is with me here in my apartment. God is with you in your house right now. Um, God is always with us at church. God is with you at school. There's nowhere that God is not, right? God is with you all the time and God is with everyone at all times. But that's not what the Jewish people believed, at least at that point. A couple years before, the temple had been destroyed. Okay, now this is the only place where they can worship God. This is the place where they think that God dwells. This is where God lives. This is where God's spirit is. So for that temple to be destroyed, and it was destroyed by the Roman emperor, and his name is Vespasian. Sorry, again, like I said, I'm not into all that, you know, lineage of emperors and stuff like that. So, but it actually is important for the Bible. So the Roman emperor destroys the temple. What do you think that means for the Jewish people? They are freaking out. This is not a good thing. That's where God's spirit dwells. What do you do about the temple? I want you to read Matthew 27, 45 through 53. It will be on your screen, so you'll have that. I need you to read that. Read it, read it to yourself or whoever you're with. Okay. If you look at verse 51, it says, Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two. From top to bottom. Now, if you didn't know anything, like if you just read that, like in English, how we just did, um, which the Bible was not written in English, this part was written in Greek, you would be like, what? I don't understand what that means. What curtain? What What is sanctuary? Like, why is that even important? Well, the sanctuary how, um, again, I don't know what your text says, but it, we're talking about the temple, okay? So that's what that means. And the curtain is that dividing place between where people could go in to worship God and the small sacred room where the Holy of Holies was, where God's spirit dwelled. Okay, and remember, not everyone, only very, very select few people could go into that room. Okay, so that curtain, that dividing barrier, it says it was torn in two from top to bottom. That barrier that divided those two rooms. So what do you think happened when that curtain split open? How do you think that God changed in that moment? Or did God change? I want you to kind of think about, about that. And then there's another part right after that where it starts in verse 52 and it says, this is, again, another specific part that Matthew has, and it says, And the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of the graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. And then it goes on until the end of 54 where it says, People were filled with awe, and they said, This was certainly God's Son. It sounds like it's in a zombie apocalypse. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I started doing a little more research on this, and I'm like, I don't, like, entirely understand kind of what's going on. Um, I can probably give you a little more specifics, like, if you're actually really interested in this. Um, but for just the sake of, of us having this lesson, um, again, I don't necessarily think there were all these um, zombies going around Jerusalem. Um, it was not this crazy um, res resurrection of all these bodies. Probably not. Um, but what did the people after Jesus was resurrected, even though Matthew kind of jumps the gun on this at verse 53, talking about the resurrection, this, he's not even been buried yet. Um, what did they learn 
about who Jesus is. That's the important part. Whether there were all these, you know, people that zombies resurrected or not, I don't really know. I don't know if that's the important thing to think about. Um, what people learned was that they saw something magnificent happen, saw something that only Jesus would be capable of doing. And so by default, or because of that, they said, this is God's son. So that's really what I want you guys to take away from the Gospel of Matthew, is that it's the second one written. It used Mark's information to create an additional story. And also, it, like I said, it is the most Jewish, but what does that mean, right? There was a lot of blurred lines between what it meant to be a kind of a new Christian and what it meant to be culturally Jewish. Some people were still Jewish, meaning that they didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah or the Son of God, but then there were some that did believe, but they were still practicing their culture as if they were Jewish. So. Um, and Matthew talks a lot about the temple. And so having that understanding and that knowledge of the temple is really important. When you even just when you read about Jesus' death, that little that one line in there that is not in the other gospels is really important because it might actually start to tell us something different about how Matthew started to see. God's presence and God's spirit differently in the world after that, after Jesus' death and resurrection, which is pretty cool. But I encourage you to read more of the Gospel of Matthew, learn a little bit about how it's similar, how it's different from the other Gospels. So I wish that we were in person. I wish that I could just be teaching this to you guys face to face, but I hope this is better than nothing. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the Gospels and for the different accounts that we have to learn more about your son, Jesus Christ, and the ways in which he um, sacrificed for us and the ways in which he continues to give us new life and continues to teach us more about um, who you are. So let us continue to find ways to grow closer to you in Jesus Christ. Name we pray. Amen.